um, thank you so much for coming for today's um, three years on response and retribution session. We have been taking two weeks break because my family is visiting. Uh, so we're going to continue. Uh, treaties and response and retributions, part 13, clause 59. Let's begin by chanting 10 times Amitofo. 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 A mi to for A mi to for A mi to for A mi to for Today we're gonna continue on the clause 59 because last time we talked about uh, you know fork out the O and favor the new you know the friends that you made throughout the hard times or when you're in your formative years you forgot about them when you have a new friends maybe with more influence more power and um, that is not uh, a very good attitude to have because people who forgot those who helped them in through hard times or you know the people who being with them um, at their early stage you know in their life um, is not a very good um, indication of uh, trustworthiness and reliability uh, when you know they jump ships as soon as they saw something uh, bigger and better that's not to say that you should not expanding your circles or you know grab an opportunity and, and develop yourself this does not have to be done in the expense of you know, the good people that actually made you know help you at the very beginning instead you should always keep them in your heart and repay them as soon as you're able tenfold you know and that's what that's how it should be and that's how it actually helps your life to be even more successful you know because you actually valued loyalty very friendships and you know what goes around comes around you want people um, you know to uh to actually uh, you know, be genuine and actually be uh, um, uh, grateful as well, right? Uh, we, we never say no to people who are very grateful. So gratefulness is very important so that we do not lose our compass because there's so many things in this world that can tempt us, you know, away from being the true version of ourselves and and the consequences is we might, be, you know, be blinded with monies, with you know, lust, with anger, with power, with lust for power, lust for anger, lust for, uh, you know, all these um, sensations uh, that, you know, we lost ourselves and in the end become destructive. So a, a healthy relationship, a healthy life, you know, should be built on a very, um, you know, strong uh, value strong um, relationships solid stable relationships with yourself with others your family your uh, significant others your spouse your friends as well a group of doesn't have to be a lot have a, a very solid uh, healthy group of friends you know that you can rely on talk about things those are important for the well-being of a human you know, of an individual and only then you can grow and expand you know, without worries. Even with worries, you can share it. So that's why important is, you know, sometimes it's like wine, right? The wine gets better with age. So does our friend. So does our family. You know, the more you walk with them, the more, you know, experience and the more stuff you can talk about. But sometimes to a level where you don't even need to talk about it, but you already know how they feel and you know get in sync with each other that's the most um, beautiful scenario uh, of course this is not the path without any um, you know uh, storm you know it's not path of because uh, everyone has different affinity to each other so um, but the general guideline is always appreciate people you know from all parts of your life you know, do not forget about them 
when you are in the um, different stage uh, of your life. Do not uh, follow only the money and the power because those things are secondary. They are not the root, they are the fruit. And the fruit cannot exist without the root. It's and the root is, you know, being a grateful person, person worthy of respect, and res- a person worthy of respect is the person who respects others. Those are very like simple common sense, but it's very easy to get loss of it, you know, loss of sight, and that's why we need friends like that who actually sees you for who you are, not you know what position you're in at the moment. You know, the higher you get, the harder it is to get someone who actually uh, really want to, you know, be friend with you or be be with you for the person who you really are not just because you're having this title and five properties you know you're wealthy and all that so those are very um, cherishable people you know in your life so to the second one talks about um, they see fully speak of what contract is one's heart in order yeah go against your conscience you know because you want to gain something you want to um, machine you know uh, scheme in order to get something, and uh, unfortunately, you know this this kind of um, deeds. You know, it might seems like you earn, you gain something, but in the end of the day, or at the end of your life, sometimes not even life. You know, maybe as you walk down the path, you will get, uh, you will realize that all these are, uh, you know, all this hard work, scheming, and all that, only makes you lost something even more precious. Loss of proper relationship, loss of proper friendships, and um, even you get to the top, you know, you're all there at the peak, lonely and without any people support you, or without any people reliable support you, or you're surrounded by yes men or stuff like that. This means you will not able to hold on to that peak any longer. The only way you can do that is you actually um, treat other people with respect and. You know, revere the good, you know, shun the evils. And the revere the good means that you need to revere the good quality of humanity, like humility, not being arrogant, being humble. When there is sound of ice, crit- criticism, take it uh, with a humble heart, especially when you get to the level. And that's why deceitfully speaking is actually very harmful towards not just others, that you try and deceive to get something from them, but also yourself, because you, you know, you go into a path of you know, you're not you're not building something your life on something that is solid, something that is real. It's, you build it on lies upon lies upon lies. It might seems like the world is like that, you know, oh Darwinism, strong favors and whatever, uh, but that's not how it works, you know. Like how how you can get to the top sometimes is because a lot of people supporting you behind it and yes you might have to employ a bit of tactics or two in order to you know have an upper advantage over another but um, it should be done fairly as much as you can you know? and it also should be a, a very truthful um, exchange with people close to you your entourage as well it shouldn't be a deceit and you know backstabbing. Those things cannot last. Your organization can't last long. Your organization can be as small as you and yourself, or you and your family, or as big as a company, you know, multi-billion dollar company. It has to have something genuine in it, you know. And um, so this is not a good habit to begin, right? Uh, and and if you want it, if you want to play a long game, it's always better to have more truth than but uh, build, build it more on honesty rather than just um, you know spinning more yarns to get more favors and then only to replace by another person who spin even more yarns to cover what happened before and this will mean that you're you're losing faith uh, from the public they lose trust and all that your friends you know, losing trust because you are not who you say you are. Um, there's a balance to be there. You know, you don't have to like open up and say everything you think. That's another problem as well. But just be genuine, truthful when 
you have to, right? Especially people who actually um, needs to know that so that they can actually help you, right? The, the close group of people. In public, you also not manipulate the opinion, not trying to, of course, I'm talking about utopia, I know. Um, but that should always be a standard. Otherwise, it's, it's a mess. It's already a mess right now. So it's going to be even worse. Despite that, we still need to have standards you know, towards ourselves, towards our own family, especially if you're parents. That should be big no-no to sp say lies between husband and wife. It's fine to have a bit of secret, but it should not be a huge one or you shouldn't have a secret at all if you truly want this relationship to grow. You know, you have, can have privacy, but you also need to open up. Otherwise, there's nothing to build on in this relationship. Either way, deceitfully speak, uh, it's not it's not really going to help you to build any uh, stable relationship, uh, stable um, life. It's going to be a lot of yarns, spinning yarns, and, and, and you don't even know who to trust anymore. It's it's, it's a painful one. So uh, Now today we talk about this new clause. To be corrupt and greedy for bribes, to deceive one's superiors. Yeah. So remember what the... Uh, this is called unscrupulous behavior. Maybe because there is nothing to deter from us from doing this um, bad uh, hap, uh, this bad deeds so we can you know we, we thought people don't know so we can do it like that right like manipulate others and you know um, ditch the um, people who actually helped you in the past and just because you got you know better favors from the new one and, and so that's this one you know the only person, the people who can be corrupt and greedy for bribes usually in the position of power because they are more, um, you know, they have the access to this. You know, they are standing in the position of authority where people need to get that access in order to do their daily lives. You know, you can be either like doctors, you know, in a hospital, give preferential treatment to the patients. That is a very bad habit in uh, in the country where they you know wrap the bribe the doctor with uh what we call home bao you know the red packet uh to the doctors it's a very bad habit and the doctor just give them preferential treatment rather than follow the procedures and actually trying to make it as fair as it could be uh same goes for like you know people in politics you know in the in the disguise of legal legality or oh, it's illegal to do that it's legal to lobby and all that they funnel billions and billions of dollars and uh, it's bribe even though it's legal it's bribe because it's, this bribe is going against the public interest if you're actually harming the public interest then it's bribe right bribe indicates you do things out of the public out of this like uh selfishness you know, small minded a narrow group of people instead of a the public goods that actually help everyone you know have to have a better access to the services they need to live better so you channel like 90 percent of the resources for the benefit of five percent of people instead of make it as equal as possible to everyone uh, in a way that's acceptable right you still, you still can reward the people who have you know influence and access but you should not be in the way of such a huge disproportionate um, uh, such a huge disparity that it, it's actually hurting the entire society so with, I'm talking about the macro big scales because those are important right public trials you need to have some, you know, some sense of normalcy and faith in the um, systems that everyone's living in otherwise it's going to be messy you know might, why might as well go and rob <laughs> if, if 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 life is so hard in the system right they, they make they make you so hard to access to basic needs and healthcare and stuff like that might as well go and become Robin Hood that's how Robin Hood is admirable even though their methods can be bad of course I do not encourage that because we are not learning about that kind of thing is the whole point of um, 
learning about this is cause and effect and uh, corrupt and greedy for bribes you know might benefit you and your family or your um, you and your family and your cabal you know your syndicates of whatever you know it can be as legal as a politician some multi-corporation big company guy it's bribe right and there's a there's a price to pay for it and the price might not come very swift but it will come and when it comes it can hurt you really bad that you will cry that you will pray that you never did that in the first place uh, because all you did is you're harming the ecosystem basic basically the ecosystem of the society you know the the you know how everyone needs this to get by and you you know monopolize it you you, you shuffle it only for the benefits of few people that say they want 10 Lamborghini now they want 10 more Lamborghini but they, have, they only have a pair of buttocks so how many more Lamborghini do they need for that pair of buttocks they're going to die in 100 years they don't have to all it takes is one tsunami or one meteor to fall into that place to wipe this all away that's not right of course I'm being very um, exaggerative I shouldn't do that sorry but um, put it in perspective right like earth against the sun against the solar uh, system little tiny speck of dust you know, even smaller than ants that's that's the size of our earth compared to the solar system and not to mention even more stuff to put us in perspective will make us understand in the position of wealth in the position of authority you should protect you should serve i know i know cliche oh protect and serve yes yes like you know one of the zen masters say yeah three years old knows that do no evil do all good uh you know do no evil and purify our heart three years old would know that this is a right thing to do but 80 years old might not be able to realize it in in practice yes right why because there is always um this desire then desire was coming out of insufficiency i'm lacking this i'm lacking that the sense of lacking right some of them is needs but big percentage is always greed you want more and more and more needs are actually very basics you know good uh, sufficient food sufficient living environment you know you can be comfy you can be just spacious enough for you uh to, to walk around to interact to socialize you don't need that much and you know the rest you can use it to help others privately or publicly right i do not support one way or the other it can be it should be organic right it should have something like a system where it helps people at the bottom at the very least to have something to get by and also privately you can be philanthropist and uh philanthropist to help uh people to um you know on your own initiative right and of course you know, I, I might go off at risk of uh, going off a tangent here. Uh, Fear and trophies, whether it's genuine or just for publicity, there's another topic, right? As long as they do it and they actually use it to help people not to avoid, evade tax, because government will charge less tax on the on the money proceeds to the to the charity. Unfortunately, people use that as a way to pay less tax, hence less to the public service. But um, that's all about it's all about greed. Right, like not enough to have one house, you want to have three houses, you know, and and this is why we 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 are not getting a very good outlook in our future as a as a collective human race. It's just you know we're like one part of people in advantage like to hoard, and the other part feel the disadvantage, might want to go and get it from you. So there's two problems, right? Wei Fu Buren, you know. In Chinese saying, being a being in the position of wealth, but not having a heart of not not having a human heart, and not having a heart of um, compassion, and empathy, is very dangerous things, you know, um, because you you live comfortably, but at the expense of many people, um, at the expense of others, uh, and that means you invoke dangers you know look at histories right how many kings were toppled how many uh bourgeois was taken away from the possession and force it's an extreme method but when you 
allow that to happen, you kind of have to get ready for it. You know, that kind of reaction. This is just balance, right? Striking balance. And pe- when people have nowhere to turn to, of course, they turn to their pitchforks and go for the people who have a lot more than they need. So the right way, the moderate way is to give. Give in your needs, means, and it's also a very joyful thing. And um, and also to give is not just, hey, here's the food, take it. It's always uh, coming out of respect. You treat them as equals. You treat them as someone like your parents and you take care of them like that. I'm not asking everyone to do that. I can't get to that level all the time, but always have the heart to give. You know, only then you will realize your wealth. It's not just on how many digits in your bank account. That's important, but there's also how much can you, how well can you use these digits, transform it into something actually meaningful, actually, you know, enriching yourself. You're actually wealthy for real, not just wealthy on the on the in the outside, you know, material stuff on the husk but also in the inside, you're rich, heart of gold. You know, you can give out it because you have the position of power and position of um, wealth. It's easier for you to distribute, to right, find the right person because you have more connections to actually assist people in need, in need. And you might indirectly, you know, be a part of a process of making a genius coming out because they no longer get this advantage. Having that prospect is always good. Right? It makes your life bigger than just your bank account. Because trust me, that bank account will run dry very soon, either by the, go- by the government or by your children. You know, all the trust in they were trying to fight, carve it out in pe- into pieces. Of course, not every family is like that, but I think we've seen enough of these um, disputes to, to see that uh, Generally, we'll go that direction. <laughs> uh, unless, of course, it has a very well, you know, a family built on that kind of a mi- correct mindset. You know, the mindset of service, actually trying to service people rather than just um, hoarding the wealth like a goblin. Um, you actually being a person worthy of respect. And you still be wealthy, you still be powerful, but you worthy of respect because you treat other people like human not as a peasant, right? You actually treat them as equal, even. Even though you're in the position of, it's how it works. You're in the position of power, but you never treat it as something, like a ticket to do whatever you want. You actually use that to help people in your means, you know, as comfortable as you are. And you're actually genuine, you actually want to connect with people. That's what makes you even more worthy of respect and powerful without asking for it. That's how it works, you know, not the other way around. Scheming and politicking is not helping you in the long run, or me, or anyone, sorry, anyone in the long run. So I'm going back to here, corrupt and greedy for bribes is, um, can be, you know, many reasons. I need money to help my daughter, uh, uh, you know, to get to the better school or, you know, to treat her um, cancer treatment. Okay, that's, that's too much TV, but, um, it's, yeah, it shouldn't be like that. And then the last one is to deceive one's superiors. So what did I, what did Wernerbo say about this? Um, ay, 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 ay. Deceive, right? Tell things that that is not true, and um, direct them away from the correct course of action that will help them actually to to find out what they want. Um, especially in the, in the organization when you do that it's not helping them to make the right decision and it's going to harm you in the long run right? and because people do that usually out of self-preservation or trying to um, you know trying to stop the high ups from knowing what actually happens so that they can continue whatever path course of action that benefits you or your syndicates that's usually how it works. You have your own interest and you're trying to push for it. And then the reality is when you push for that course of action in this organization, it will create the backlash. Maybe, you know, 
trying to push out some sort of products that harm the environment and stuff, then people come back and you're hiding the actual, you know, studies that say it's, it's actually not good, you know. On the ground, it really actually harms the environment or it harms the, uh, the, the, the less fortunate person to have access to the basic services because of your policy, because of your initiative. But you cover it up that kind of truth, that, that kind of reality. You paint a different picture to them. That's what it means. And because high up relies on you to, to connect to the to the ground. And so if this goes on and on and on, the whole organization was built upon false pre- uh, assumption, right? Like say you go into dive in the sea and the whole thing was designed for 1,000 kilometers. Sorry guys, I don't know what, how many miles is that? Maybe 500 miles. So 1,000 kilometers deep, you know. And then um, what happened is, you know, you cover up everything. You cover up the, uh, the, 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 the actual studies from the person who knows, you know, scientists and experienced divers. And then you tell them, I think I have a you know, great idea. We can use a cheaper material to build this because we only have, you know, uh, 1,000 you know, meters. But in reality, you have more stuff to worry about. And if you cover it up, uh, as a decision maker or in the position of transmitting this information to your boss, they go go ahead and you know continue living in their fantasy without knowing the realities. And in the end of the day, when they actually go to the real test, things goes wrong. And because they were building it on the entirely false blueprint, of course it's going to be a problem. And that's what ex- exactly what happened in the. You know, in the real case, right? There is a you know, James Cameron is a diver because he loves diving, and he he's the director of Titanic. And there is a billionaire, C, billionaire CEO, and trying to use some sort of um, different materials. I'm I'm not sure cheaper or not, but different materials. You know, trying to show that he's smart. And what happened is, um, his engineers and everyone's trying to tell him it's not right. Something's wrong with that. Uh. Of course, this case is not deceived because he is the superior. He's deceiving himself, basically. He's deceiving himself against his superior judgment. All right. So he relies on dreams and money. He thought more money means I can do things right. No, I mean you still need to have reality check and all that. And he didn't. You know, he thought, yeah, of course, they all sign the waivers and go in there, dive in, cracks. You know, under thousands and thousands of pascal of pressures crushing your entire body. You know, not even a speck of dust remains. So it happens, implosions, and they all die. So that's the consequences of not acting on a up-to-date feasible information. In this case, right, maybe in the big organization, CEO and all that, and they were making a sort of big strategic stuff and then suddenly, you know, they rely on your report, your your check, uh, and and maybe because you might have something in between, you know, something benefits you and you're trying to prevent that truth, the reality from reaching up there because it will affect your you know, gain. So at the end of the day, when they operate on that false assumption, yeah. Everyone's in the world of pain. So. Too many happens. Yeah, too many. His, too many in in history. Too many. You know, the the king was you know being um, deceived by by the by the entourage of you know eunuchs, you know Taijian, and uh, uh, maybe the um, senior officers, you know, and. So he keep pushing out those uh, senseless um, expedition, you know, to expand the territory, not knowing that they're actually losing battle. And in the end of the day, they lost not just the war, but the entire country, or kingdom, or empire. Um, put in modern times, same thing. You know, your company bankrupts. Everyone lost. 2008 financial crisis operating on a false assumption you know 
I can get more numbers you know, if I keep pushing out the products without knowing if they can pay back the loan. So let's do it. More more collaterals on one, on another, on three. It's a prime mortgage, right? And then, it, yeah, they're deceiving everyone, right? In this case, of course, it's meant for like, yeah. I, I think I'm beating a dead horse right now. Uh, where are we now? 941. So we have one more. Let's do it. Um, to slander and utter abuse, to spread malicious rumors and ruin innocent reputations. Hmm. Where have we seen that before? Too many. All right. This is G. This is G. All right. Let's have a look. Where do you think this happens often? What kind of platform this happens often? Slander, word abused, malicious rumors, ruining innocent reputation. What line of work has the highest tendency to do this kind of thing? Oh, I know. Um, the entertainment industry That's and the media. Right. Yeah. Media. There you go, guys. Media. And yeah, media is... It's a double-edged sword, right? It's a way to spread information and that brings people, you know, to a certain group or action, course of action, because you give them that information, they act on it and form groups and stuff like stuff. They influence the world and we need that you know, to get things across, like what we're doing right now. We're using this media right, to get the message across. And back in the days, they used books. You know, the saint, they um, wrote the books. Buddha didn't even have sutra back then. He used words. That's media, right? The medium to pass on one thing to another. And eventually it become books. And from, you know, printing, you have books. Uh, become more efficient to have more books. And then it becomes electronic devices like TV, television, and now we have radios and televisions and uh, even more convenient portable forms. So those are technologies, right? And behind technologies, there's always a human running it. Even if it's AI, it's built by human, right? It does not escape human intervention. That means humanness is a must in this factor, right? So it, this message does not lost no matter how th many thousands of years uh, we are moving forward ahead in our technological society. So what happened is when humans and humans spread this kind of slanders that is not true for some sort of purpose of, you know, maybe you want to one-up them, you know, so that your party or your clan party has better chances in the upcoming elections or you want to you know create some sort of um, uh, rep reputation that is not there or exaggerate but it's there um, so that it can achieve a certain outcome in order to say bolster you know, the investment you know people were like oh yeah this news comes out mm -hmm, we should put more money in that sector and, oh no happens to have more you know, stuff to sell because you slowly nudging people to that direction. Basically, it's a shepherd, right? That's why, you know, Christian says like, you know, the word, you know, the prophets like the shepherds that hurts people towards a direction, right? Hopefully, it's the kingdom of heaven. That would be a good thing. But as we can see, a lot of people did not make it and, and ended up with more painful and sufferings what we call six dreams and that's too abstract it, it becomes you know a hell on earth maybe wars it's also happened because of information misinformation war happens with misinformation and misinformation is important for wars to happen so when you everyone got the right level of information there's nothing to fight for 
of course, there's no wars. Unfortunately, that's not the truth. Um, because we need wisdom to discern what is right and wrong, to understand what is, you know, one element of truth but exaggerated into 300 degree of scales. You know, maybe that person just say something like, uh, say one sentence, you know, but they make it into an entire thesis, you know, five page report, uh, of, uh, and saying that this guy is doing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then hire a few people. See, I even teach it like, like the techniques, you know, hiring a few people in the right place happen to witness this, witness that. So, creating false evidence, all right, even not in legal court of law because court of law. Legal, you know, legal court. They are very tedious, one by one, right? They want to actually capture that. You don't even need that. Media can just create the perception of, you know, this person might not actually do that, but we just need to put enough information in your mind that this person might also have 20, 30 percent of chances of doing that. That's more than enough to kick things, get things moving. You can see how dangerous it is. If our information is falling into the wrong mindset, I can't say the wrong hand because we need information to get by, right? Even we broke down into primitive era, we still need some sort of information, fire, sp uh, smokes. The question is, it's so fast, so easy, so accessible to get information, it will... Um, it makes us think, you know, like, is all information correct? Or is all information beneficial if, if we know it? I think there is a saying in, um, I think Confucius, I think, someone asked him, uh, if I have something to tell them, like, like if I have, you know, heard something from someone, rumors, should I pass it on to the actual person affected? And then Confucius say, you have to ask yourself, first thing, is it true? Second thing, is it actually helpful? to that person. Constructive criticism is helpful as well, but is it helpful you know, to that person? And number three, is it even useful, right, at all? Or does it cause harm? Then you make your decision based on these criteria. Is it true? Even if it's true, is it helpful? Right? Is it actually helpful towards them? Of course, you can say, oh, I have no right to say it's helpful or not. He needs to know. Yeah, but the timing for that as well, right? Not when people need concentrating on one thing, you tell them all this news and then they suddenly broke down. But I digress. This is not... I digress a little bit. But yes, slander and utter abuse, malicious rumors and to ruin innocent reputation. Yeah. So it, there's a saying, Yao yan zi yu zi zi. so everything you hear, whether if it's true or half true or some elements of exaggeration in it, it stops, the bug stops with you. You just don't allow that atmosphere to create through your mouth. And if you can stop, you know, that one, that the, the you can avoid this happening through your hand, you will. Uh, it's, it's, that means you're not contributing to this mess, right? That means you have better wisdom. It might help people who actually need to know. Because you can see clearer. Right? You can understand where this come from. The, the motive might not be pure. You might just want to... Some people just like to talk about it because it's, it's how, you, how you get by. Wandering thoughts, right? You, you need to get something out. right? But some of them might be malicious, like this one. Right? You can see in politics, that's how they do it. And trying to dig some dirt on you and then spread it into the internet and everyone even though it might not be true more than enough just create enough suspicions everyone which is like everyone will have that idea like a witch hunt right idea of a, idea of a witch creating a, some sort of magic you see it's not logic we're not 100% logical person unfortunately we are over we might say oh we're all free and you know independent and stuff like that. In the other day, we are still a bunch of sheep, in a sense. We're herded, herded by society. And that's very unfortunate because that's how it works. You know, you live in this society and 
everything everyone did will affect you, right? And so it's important to understand um, not to get swayed by it, but still adapt to it. You understand the game about it, and you still you still you still go with the flow, but you're not changing by it. You're observing the movement very clearly. If not, you're not allowing it to, you know, make you, you know, you don't allow yourself uh, to be swayed by it too easily, not too gullible. Then it's wisdom, right? And wisdom needs, you know, uh, a clear mind. And a clear mind cannot be happening without clear mind. Uh, a clear mind cannot be happening without um, <clears throat> taking the third person perspective. If you're too deep into it, you can't. So you need to let go of the temptation, desires. That's what Buddha trying to help us in the very first stage. And I myself confess I failed already at that part. So how can you be clear against the troubles that falls on you? Right? That's why we need to work on our desires, work on our understanding, channel it into the right place, put it in the right directions. And what is right direction, right? If something that really speaks to your heart and it's something that really help others and yourself to, um, you know, to get your life into a better state, then it, it should be good to go. As long as it benefits everyone, right? Not at the expense of any person or any animal or anything, right? So kind words form friendships and form good relationship, but slanders will destroy families. Doesn't have to be corporate, just families. Hey, I seen you walking with some girls, uh, you know, like you say like that uh, in front of someone else's wife. Or you say something like, oh yeah, that maybe it's a very innocent stuff. And then you might, you know, neighborhood being nosy. We see seldom seen that nowadays, but you know there are. We call it bagua, bagua po, jiza, like um bagua. People who really, really, really like to know every single thing that has nothing to do with his life or survival or anything important, but they're very nosy, poke into other people's business, and then have a wrong perception of things because they don't know the whole thing, and then they spread it to the family, and then it affects their relationships. Okay, so, yeah. Let's see if I can get deeper with uh, Venerable's speech. Mm. Mm. Yeah, in Buddhism as well, right? We have something called no lying, no double speech. I mean, no lying, no um, provoking both sides. No, no, no. Instigation, yeah, no lying, no instigating conflicts by, you know, spreading false information on both sides. Uh, no, no, no harsh word, of course, utter abuse, abusive words. Um, no um, misinformation, no, no flowery words, words they are not true. They are not, they have no substance. They're just trying to sweeten up, buttering people up. Um, just for the sake of it. We're talking about that in the context of, you know, as a habit. You can have a little bit of fun and tease and banter with your family and friends. That's that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about serious situation. I mean, we're talking about actual situation where, you know, when it comes, you know, when put, it pushed to shove, um, you know, you really need to dig to the matter. You need to be real and sincere. You cannot cover it up with this for transgression of speech there's transgression of mind you know greed hatred ignorance transgression of speech there's four lying in in in, in terms of big lie small lie big lie is lying that you buddha pray worship me give me the money number two it yeah trying to gain praise oh i'm messiah i'm the prophet you know like some certain sect uh claiming he's a jesus comes again or look at typing rebellion and someone claim that his Jesus come again. This is another form of big lying. Um, doesn't restrict the Buddhism only, but it can be anything, you know. Impersonating someone, a sage, you know, trying to gain followers 
influence power. That's big lies. Small lies like like you don't say something as is. Um, slander as well. Slander is instigating conflict, right? Abusive words. That's another transgression. And then the flowery, flowery words. You know, the words that are over, um, over sugar coated and it's not substantial. Um, usually, it's meant for like you know, sweeten someone up to manipulate them. You know, especially someone gullible, someone more vulnerable to words like that. You know, someone very lonely, you use that romantic scam. Someone, um, you know, maybe have a need for um, a certain products, you give them that sort of benefit that is not there. But there's also flowery words, Huai and Chao Yu. Um, those are four transgression of speech and transgression of action is killing, stealing, sexual misconduct. All right, so back to here, we uh, kind of cover up the basics of this. And in Buddhism, the slander and abuse of the Dharma, of the monk, of the venerable, it's a huge, huge, huge problem. Doesn't matter you're a follower, non-follower. Of course, as a follower, as in you people, you already know the rules of the Buddhism, you know, like protect the Dharma, spread the Dharma, always, uh, you know, adhere to the five precepts, but you are committing offenses, your punishment will be threefold. It's like policemen commit crimes of robbery. Yeah, you're supposed to, you're supposed to protect and serve, not rob. And, um, and the most important thing about this, right, malicious rumors ruin innocent reputation in our context as Buddhists is in ruining reputation of a you know, monk or a venerable or even a person who's doing a very, who has a very important pivotal role in the, spreading the Dharma, lay or, or monastic, doesn't matter, as long as they are very important um, in that role and you're trying to undermine his reputation you know? it's not that he wants that reputation to be to make himself famous and powerful it's because this reputation was built organically over time because this person sincerely serve the community the buddhist community the world right like master ching kong right like other great monks as well master xing yun and other great monks and we slander them because we don't know any better or we heard someone say something and then you, you, you utter that that would be a most foolish way to put yourself into the worst level of punishment avici hell so don't do that right don't say anything you're not sure or utter motive you know trying to you know undermine that person because of some sort of uh, hatred some sort of motive you know so just just be careful. Yeah. So best way to deal with this, all this, you know, sorry, this part, this problem is just here, and then forget about it, or stop. The buck stops with you. You just don't need to open your mouth to talk about it at all. Treat it like it doesn't exist, because if it has no substance, it do it does not help. It has, uh, you know, even though we have one percent of truth, ninety nine of them is watered down. You know, with some some mumbo jumbos, then why why do you want to keep the rubbish in your mind, right? Why not just put something better, more beautiful, more um, pleasing in your mind instead? All right, it does not help. It's not entirely true, uh, and it causes harm you know, to the people involved and to the people um, who speaks this spread these rumors. What will harm them as well? See. So, yeah, and uh, the co consequences of ruining someone else, like great monks and, you know, people who in a great um, position of respect by the community is avici hell. Avici means, a ah means without, vici means stop. The suffering, just not stopping, right? And hell is a state of suffering that is constantly repeating, repeating itself. Think of trauma, but billions, gazillions of um, pain on top of that. And that trauma never stops. You replay the same horror movie again and again. 
you die again and again but you're not dying you repeat yourself again and again the pain keeps repeating again and again until your negative karma exhausts so that's the worst form of punishment inflicted by yourself no one's doing that to you not Buddha not the whatever Yama King not Jesus not Muhammad no one yourself cause and effect right so don't do that All right even the worldly stuff you know someone in political position and this this person is quite genuine they're actually trying to do something for the people and we ruin them just because we want to win the election and we use something that is not true All right it's one thing to keep them in check it's another thing to actually create some sort of false perception you know smoke screen to fool everyone right that's that's very bad that, first you ruin the you know chances of public being having a better better leader to to better their lives and second you actually preventing people who genuinely wants to serve joining in the joining in the establishments you know you 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 oozing out you take you take out the good people in this establishment. Um, so yeah. But yeah, I'll stop here because it's ten o'clock. I still have to go back to my work. Um, yeah. So that's it. Any questions? Hello, Amy. Hi, Yenzu. Any questions? All good. Okay. Uh, no questions. Yes, please. All right. We'll conclude this today with, te with the dedication of merits and 10 times I'm in tour for. So I'm just going to read off the screen. May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings for those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and leave the teachings for the rest of this life then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss ami to fo 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 a mi to fo a mi to fo thank you everyone for coming i saw melinda went in but um next time right so, and this what uh, a sunday we have quite a bit of event going on in the morning 10 30 sydney time i don't think it changed because venerable wooding is in sydney unless something else changes so as far as we know 10 30 sydney time We'll have Venerable Wooding giving a talk until 12, 11.30. And at the night time, we have Venerable Cheng De, which is, you know, we know as Teacher Chai, uh, when he was now a monk, um, he's giving a talk. What time at the night? Uh, Sydney time is 6.30 to 7, 8.30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 6.30 to 8.30, night, p.m., p.m. There is a Saturday. Oh, yeah, I should go to sleep. There's <laughs> there is a Saturday. Sorry, guys. Yes, Saturday night, six thirty p.m. to eight thirty p.m. And then Sunday morning, we have Venerable Willing, uh, ten thirty to eleven thirty to give us the usual Dharma talk. Sunday morning. All right. Good night. Okay. Thanks, Dylan. Uh, probably see you on Sunday. Yeah. See you on Sunday. Bye. Bye. Amitofo. Amitofo. Bye. Bye. Amitofo.